Well, welcome back to the homestead. Today's episode, I want to talk about this old claw tub and see if we can't do a little bit of work to uh, revive it and give it a new lease on life. So this particular claw tub uh, is kind of near and dear to my heart because it's been in my family for a very long time. Uh, I don't remember the year, but uh, a long, long time ago, my grandfather bought a 150 acre uh, farm down in Pinkneville, Mississippi. And uh, when he bought that, uh, the gentleman he bought it from was Mr. Bell. And Mr. Bell ran a small country store out there. So Mr. Bell had a farmhouse on one hill and his little store on the hill next to it. And when Grandad bought the land from him, uh, he didn't buy the store from Mr. Bell. So Mr. Bell kept the store, even though Granddaddy owned the land, and Mr. Bell ran that store until he passed away. So once Granddaddy bought the land, Mr. Bell moved into the back of the store and my grandparents moved into the old house. And it was my grandmother and grandfather, my mom and her brother, and my granddaddy's mother that all lived in the house. And at that time, the house didn't have uh, a bathroom in it. So they still had an outhouse. And my grandfather decided he was going to add on to this old house and build a bathroom on it. So he, he built a, a bathroom addition onto the house and he went and he got a sink and a toilet and this particular tub. Now, he didn't buy this tub new. He bought this tub used from a army uh, base in Centerville, Mississippi, uh, Camp Van Dorn. So they had just uh, pulled a bunch of these claw tubs out of the barracks and redone the barracks and all and they were selling these tubs. So my grandfather bought this old claw tub used for $5. And he brought it home and he put it into that old house that uh, the family was living in. Now, eventually they, uh, they moved out of that house and my, my grandfather had a, a new house built there and they moved into that new house. But while they were living in the old house with this tub, they didn't have any running water even though they had uh, an indoor restroom, uh, you still had to go outside and pump the water out of a cistern and bring it inside and fill up the sink or fill up the tub or whatever you were using the water for. So <clears throat> after they moved out of the old house, the house went dormant for quite a long time and my mother had grown up and she had gotten married, moved off, had her own family. and. Uh, time goes by, uh, as my grandparents got older, my mom and dad decided they were going to move back home and help take care of the grandparents. So we wound up selling our, our new brick home and moving back out to the country. And when we did, my dad decided he was going to build our new house. But in order for him to do that, we needed a place to live while he was building it. So we moved in to the old house and, uh, once again, we, we had this old tub sitting in the bathroom and still no running water. So we still, we had the two cisterns out in the yard that we uh, caught rainwater in and we used that to uh, fill up the tub, to take our baths and stuff. Uh, and it was a, a very unique uh, time in my life. It was about three years that we lived in this old house while my dad built our new house. And, and I'm very grateful for that time period because it gave us a glimpse of what bygone times were like. And it gave us a, a new appreciation for the amenities that we had. And uh, it also kind of lets you know just what really is a necessity and what's not a necessity in life. Uh, so at any rate, I'm, I'm very glad that I, I had that opportunity for about three years to to live in that old house, even though it was cold, it was drafty, it was hot during the summer. Uh, it was not a comfortable house, but it's it's a experience I'm grateful that I had. But at any rate, uh, once my dad finished building our new home, we moved out of the old house into the house my dad built. And uh, the old house went dormant again. And eventually, uh, when I grew up and went off into the military, and I got out of the military, I came back to the homestead for a time period. And I actually moved back into the old farmhouse uh, for a short time then too. So uh, 
this tub has, has been around us for a pretty good while. Now, this particular tub uh, was cast on February 21st of 1917. So uh, just a week or so ago, this tub turned 103. And it's in still, still in pretty good shape. Uh, the porcelain has got a few chips in it. You know, it, it's not as smooth as I would like it to be. And of course the outside has got the rust on it and the other side uh, has got a bunch of old lead paint on it. So what I wanna do is I wanna sand the, the or I wanna strip the paint off of the outside of this tub and then sand the outside of the tub down and see how smooth I can get it by just sanding it. And when I refinish it, I want the outside of the tub to be a, a fairly smooth finish. And most of these tubs were not designed for that. Uh, they actually had a fairly rough finish on the outside uh, when they were brand new. So if we can't get it really smooth when I just sand it, strip the paint and sand it down, I think what I'm gonna do is maybe try and put a skim coat of body filler on it before I paint the outside. But at any rate, we're, we're going to clean the outside up, we're gonna repaint the outside, and then we're also going to uh, use a uh, epoxy tub refinish to redo the interior of the tub so we can uh, get the interior nice and smooth like it's supposed to be. Now, originally I had actually wanted to have the tub re-porcelained, uh, but I can't find anywhere nearby that I can have a, a re-porcelain job done on this tub. So we're gonna try and, and do this uh, uh, new finish that's come out. It's like a uh, epoxy type paint. So we're gonna give that a try and see how it does. But first things first, let's go ahead and take this tub and flip it over and see if we can't get the paint stripped off the outside of it and then start sanding it down to uh, see how smooth we can get the finish on it. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna try some of this uh, paint remover here. It's uh, Citri Strip and see if we can't get some of this old uh, paint off of this side of the tub. And then once we have all the paint off, then we'll see about uh, getting it all sanded down smooth. Now that the paint stripper has been on there for a little while, I'm gonna take a wire brush and just rub over it, see what kind of paint I can loosen up, and then we'll probably uh, put a little bit more paint stripper on it and let it soak again. All right, so I've uh, let the first coat sit and then I've rubbed it down and kind of scraped it off a little bit with a plastic scraper and gone ahead and put a second coat on there. We'll let that sit for another 30 minutes or an hour or so and uh, clean that off and then see what we have. Now that I've put the uh, paint stripper on there twice and I've gone over it with the wire brush a couple of times, most of the paint has lifted off, but this paint stripper is active for about 24 hours. So what I'm gonna do is I've just pulled all of it that's caught in the uh, lip of the tub. I took the paintbrush, pulled that back up onto the tub, and I'm gonna let that sit overnight, and I'll come back tomorrow, and after that's had a, a full night to sit on there and loosen anything that's left on it, We'll go back over it with the wire brush one more time, and then we'll clean all that paint stripper off and see what we have left. So let's uh, let that soak for a little while, and then we'll come back to it. All right, so it's the next afternoon, and the uh, paint stripper is sat on there overnight. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a, uh, a plastic putty knife and 
scrape the uh, paint stripper off of it. And I'll try and collect that in a plastic bucket so I can throw that away. And I don't want to get any lead uh, paint residue down into the ground here. So <clears throat> we'll try and dispose of all the, the old paint and stripper. And once we've got the uh, bulk of that off, we'll probably run a wire brush over it one more time and then wipe it down with some uh, mineral spirits to try and clean it up. So let's go ahead and get started on it. All right, so now that I've got the stripper pretty much off of the uh, exterior of the tub, there's still a, a few places where the casting of the tub was really rough and it's kind of raised up. And what I want to do is take a uh, grinder with a flap wheel on it and uh, what a 40 grit flap wheel. I just want to go over the exterior of the tub, knock off any real high spots. And then uh, there's some ridges on the exterior of it over here and just some rough spots in the casting. So we'll probably wind up coming back after we go over it with the grinder. And uh, we'll probably come back and hit it with some Bondo. Give it just kind of a skim coat to smooth out the imperfections. Give that a light sanding before we put our, our exterior paint on it. So let's go ahead though and get started with the flat wheel. All right, so you can see the process I'm using on that. Just going over it with uh, a grinder with a 40 grit flap wheel, knocking down any high spots, getting the rest of the rust and, and paint or anything like that off of the exterior. And it's almost done, but uh, I've got a little bit more work to do on it, but that's all I'm gonna film for now. So we'll pick up when I've got the exterior of the tub ready to go to the next step. All right, so since I finished getting all the uh, paint off of the outside of the tub, after I did that, I came back with the flap wheel and the belt sander and went over the exterior of the tub, knocking down any of the high spots in the cast. And I've gotten it smoothed up a little bit. And then I went ahead and I put some primer on it because we have a lot of rain right now and I didn't want all the surface rust coming right back on it. So <clears throat> now what I want to do is I want to take some Bondo and go over the sides of the tub and fill in any of the low spots in the cast to try and even the surface just a little bit more. We're not going to worry about doing the bottom of the tub and I'm not worried about doing the, the underside of this lip, but uh, just the, the side of the tub and just across the roll there uh, for the underside is what we want to focus on. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, take some 40 grit sandpaper and just go over the sides of this uh, real lightly and uh, scratch up the primer and then we'll wipe that down, mix up the Bondo and see about getting that put on. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so we've got the Bondo put on the outside of the tub and I'm gonna let that cure for a while before I sand it down. I was reading the instructions on this Echopel that I'm going to use to finish the outside of the tub and it says that the tub needs to be 75 degrees for 12 hours before you put this product on and then it needs to remain 72 degrees for at least 48 hours after you put it on to allow it to cure right. So 
the temperature outside is not maintaining that warm consistently right now. So we're gonna have to wait for a little while until the weather warms up and uh, the temperatures are agreeable to this product. So for now, that's where we're gonna leave the tub. And then as soon as it warms up, we'll come back, sand this down and finish the outside of the tub, flip it over, and then we're gonna use the same product to refinish the interior of the tub. So until next time, y'all just keep checking back.